<laughs> I've never done this. Hi, I'm Jen. Hello. Um, my name is Jen, and I'm going to read a couple of books. Because I love to read books, so I don't know if there are any classrooms out there or any kids who want to hear a couple of books, but these are just some fun ones that I like. Um, okay, one of my favorite read aloud authors is Chris Van Dusen. I read him all the time because he has a great cadence and a great rhyme and his pictures are so much fun. Okay, this is Randy Riley's Really Big Hit. <clears throat> Here you go. Randy Riley stood at bat. He gazed out at the mound. His knees began to tremble and his heart began to pound. Then Randy started thinking about the pitcher's throw. He wondered, without gravity, how far the pitch would go. And as he stood there pondering, strike three went whizzing by. You're out, he heard the umpire call, then walked off with a sigh. Here he goes. It's easy to strike out. See, Randy was a genius. He just couldn't hit the ball. He struck out every time at bat. He wasn't good at all, but something beyond baseball brought a smile to Randy's face. What Randy Riley really loved was stuff from outer space. See, there he is riding his bike, Boop. but in his mind, he's on Mars. He studied all the planets. He memorized their tilt. He researched how the thrusters on the rocket ships were built. He knew the constellations and the light years to the stars. And wouldn't it be great, he thought, to ride a bike on Mars. <laughs> when Randy Riley got back home, he went up to his room. He knew he stunk at baseball and it filled his heart with gloom. So he took his favorite robots from the shelf above his bed and staged a game of baseball with his robot team instead. So cool. Look, he's wearing a helmet. He's got his robots. It's good to do things in your imagination. That night before he went to sleep, Randy scanned the sky and through his space boy telescope, a glimmer caught his eye. He fiddled with the focus till he saw it crystal clear. It was a massive fireball and it was coming near. Alarmed, he started plotting the projection of its path. He formulated diagrams. He double checked his math. He calculated quickly and concluded with a frown. In 19 days, the fireball would crash into his town. 19 days. Do oh, he's really surprised. Randy Riley flew downstairs to warn his mom and dad. The impact would be major and the damage would be bad. He explained the situation until his face was red, but they told him he was tired and they sent him off to bed. Parents. Look, he's saying, Mom, Dad, a fireball. And look, his mom is just calmly hanging out. There's his dad reading the paper. They are not paying attention. Poor Randy couldn't sleep at all. He thought the whole night through. By morning, it was obvious just what he had to do. Look, he's doing calculations. He gathered what he needed with determined resolution and lugged it off behind the shed to work on his solution. Look at that. That's a big wagon full of stuff. Randy toiled for 18 days while other kids had fun, but he was on a mission, so he worked till he was done. There the kids are playing baseball, but not Randy. He is working hard. At breakfast on the 19th day, the news announcer said, This is a special bulletin. Emergency. Code red. A fireball's approaching. It just flew past the moon. It's coming fast, so be prepared for it to hit by noon. His dad is spitting out his coffee. Oh my, now his parents are paying attention. Look at her. Everybody burst outside as fear and panic grew. But Randy ran back to the shed. 
he had a job to do. There's his whole town flipping out. But look, not Randy. He has a plan. He grabbed the tarp and gave a tug. It set off to it slid off to reveal the mighty mammoth robot man he'd welded out of steel. The robot needed power, and Randy knew precisely that 97 batteries would energize it nicely. The eyes lit up, the engine word. Step one was now complete. So far so good, thought Randy. Then they thundered down the street. Hmm, 97 batteries. Step two of Randy's mission took place just south of town in a section known as Millville, where he slowed the robot down. The robot ripped the smokestack off an old abandoned mill. Then Randy turned the throttle knob to march him up the hill. There's the robot. Check that out. Huge robot. Back in town, the people were as frightened as could be, but Randy knew the time had come for critical step three. The robot burst out through the trees, stepped up and took a stance while everyone fell silent as if frozen in a trance. There he goes. There he goes. He's ready. Randy's eye was on the ball. No room for error now. Three, two, one, and flip the switch. A swoosh. And then... Kapow! A blinding flash, a booming crash. He knew what he had done. Randy Riley had a hit, his very first home run. The fireball sailed out of sight. A rousing cheer began. Hooray for Randy Ryan and his Riley and his giant metal man. And as the crowd went crazy, Randy stood there with a grin and mumbled how predictable a fastball low and in. There it goes. No more danger. When things returned to normal after Randy saved the day, he went back to the baseball field to join his friends at play. And though he swings in earnest, he rarely hits the ball. But that's okay, because Randy's had the biggest hit of all. Strike three. Who cares? The end. Thanks, Chris Van Dusen. Okay. The next one is one not a lot of people know. It's by Sarah Sullivan, and it's a favorite of mine because it's a great book about friendship. And it reminds me of where I'm from. It's called Root Beer and Banana. It's summer on the river when the air is as thick as soup and you can smell tar melting on the roof. Sun's too hot for climbing trees. We've already fished our limit. Come on, squirt, granddaddy says, giving me a wink. Time to stop by Mr. Max. Rolling over gravel to the hard road, we drive past Tolliver's Farm Supply and Glenda's Antiques to Mr. Mack's General Store. I can hardly wait to get inside. Mr. Mack's ceiling fans stir the heat while the ice cream freezer, freezer hums its steady tune. Cold air hits my face when I slide the door open. I stare at the colors on the paper wrappers, orange, cherry, and grape, but the best flavors are hidden underneath. There's the ice cream freezer. Banana or root beer? Root beer or banana? Which one will I choose? I go outside to think it over, leaving Granddaddy and Mr. Mac to swap stories, who moved, who got married, who has a baby coming, the way old friends do. Watching Main Street shimmer under the noonday sun, I see a girl waving from the shade of an old willow tree. What's your name, she asks. Molly, I say. 
But my granddaddy calls me Squirt. She has bright yellow patches on her dress with zigzag stitching so they look like shiny suns. My name's Miracle on account of the doctor said Mama couldn't have any more after my brothers, but I came anyway. Hmm. I got some money, Miracle says. Want to see? She opens up her palm and shows me a nickel. I found it lying on the road. I'm going to buy something with it. What are you going to buy, I ask. One of those ice pops, Miracle says. Ice pops cost a dime, but I don't say anything. Come on, Miracle says. I'll show you where they are. She leads me to the freezer and reaches inside. I want root beer, she says. Which one's that? I fish out the ice pop with the brown wrapper and hand it over. What's it going to be, Squirt? Granddaddy asks. Banana and root beer, I tell him. He gives me a look. I know what it means. Miracle needs one, too, I explain. Miracle, he asks. She's my new friend, I tell him. Pleased to meet you, little lady, he says. Miracle pumps his hand. I live on Tucker's Creek, she says. Do you know where that is? I sure do, he tells her. I like that granddaddy so much. I'm going to buy my ice pop with this, Miracle says. I found it lying on the road. Well, now, Granddaddy said, which flavor's for you? Root beer, she tells him. And banana for me, please, I say. Miracle holds out her nickel. That's all right, Granddaddy tells her. This one's on me. Thanks, mister, Miracle says. She tucks her money away. I give Granddaddy's hand a big squeeze. The screen door makes a lazy moan when Miracle pushes it open. Mr. Max Bird Dog raises his head to see if we have anything for him, but we tell him ice pops aren't for dogs. Would you like to trade halves, I ask her. You can have half my banana, I'll have half of your root beer. That's a good idea, she says. That way we get a taste of both. So... I help her break her ice pop and she helps me with mine. And we sit together under the shade of the old willow tree, eating root beer and banana, banana and root beer, and swapping stories the way old friends do. <laughs> the end. That's all. Should we do it again sometime? I don't know. Thank you so much if you watched. Oh, there are questions, but I mean, I don't even know. I'm ready. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I don't even understand what I'm supposed to do with what's coming, and I don't have glasses on, but thank you for being here. And maybe we'll do it again if you like it. I mean, we don't have to. Don't worry about it. But have a great day, and don't forget to read. Read to your kids. Hey, Birdie. Birdie, come here. Did you want to say hi? Come here. Bye.